Welcome to the Rustic Garden. This is my last video on my community plot series for 2015. I'll be doing this again in 2016, starting in the spring. This is where I'm going to end. I've taken out all the tomatoes, peppers, all the vegetables, all the plant matter, mostly, that really um, can't survive the cold, shouldn't be in a garden. You should get rid of all the debris. Don't compost it. In case you've had diseases, you don't want that composting or you don't want the spores sitting in your compost pile. So I removed just about everything. The kales you can see are sitting back there. Any plant in my area that can survive the winter, all those plants that you see will come back in the spring, they'll flower, I'll be able to eat the leaves, I'll be able to eat the flowers. So they're all good to stay. But you can see, here was the peppers. They've all been removed. Everything has really been taken out of the garden that doesn't need to be in there for the winter. That hay bale back there will get mulched into all the beds. Next year what I'm going to do is build more raised beds and I will show you the whole progress of that. And here's a little kind of prelude. These are eight foot pressure treated lumber. There, it's um, eight foot pieces, uh, eight inches wide pressure treated lumber. There's a myth that you can't use pressure treated lumber. 15 years ago they did used to put arsenic in the wood. You probably don't want that in your garden. Now they use copper, so it's perfectly safe to use in your garden. Yes, some copper could leach into the garden, but copper is also a product they use for organic garden, gardening and it is sprayed on leaves, so I wouldn't worry too much about it. This wood right here cost me uh, $19.50, two eight-foot pieces. I had them cut it in half right at Home Depot. These will get screwed together for the beginning of the next series that starts in the spring. And this will be my raised bed, eight inches high, and it only costs $19.50, they do the cutting for you. The tomatoes were in here, they've all been removed. This is uh, the metal that goes into the ground. Like when you have basement windows, they use this to create the window wells, galvanized steel, so that you can have a gap between the basement window and the earth. And each one of those, this is a half, they're going to get tied together with some string right down there in, in the spring when I start the new series. This is a way to make a raised bed. That's 12 inches high. Each piece was $15.50 and that was about $30. And if you've been watching my series, there's a low sort of water table here. So the ground gets really wet. So I want to raise the beds up. I think it'll look nice and I will take you through the entire process. Also, towards the end of this video, I'm going to just recap all of the uh, dozen plus videos and just show you how things developed. I've been struggling with white flies and I haven't been here. Look at all those. They keep coming back. I treat them. They're good for a while. If a couple eggs last, they all come back. And because I'm not really out here anymore over the last three weeks or so, they've all come back. So I'm going to give them one more good spray, try and kill them back. And I, like I said, that kale is going to overwinter. Here's another disease. This is on a um, flowering plant. I think it's bee balm. And you can see on the leaves, that's powdery mildew. That probably doesn't transfer to my vegetables. There's different varieties of pow powdery mildew, but I do want to remove all these leaves. I don't want them sitting there because I don't want them to come, I don't want the spores to come back onto the plants. Finally, let me show you real quick before I do a recap of the whole season. This is some of the things that I did with the peppers that I grew. These are cayenne peppers. They were dried in the oven. I have videos to show you how to do that. And you just put them in a Ziploc bag. You want to keep it sealed because moisture will seep back into these after they are dry. But once they're dried, let's see if I can do this one-handed. Just keep them in the bag. And when you're doing anything, you can just crush them up, put them on your pasta sauces or whatever you, or pasta, or whatever you'd like to put fresh cayenne pepper on. These are my lemon peppers, very hot, also dried in the same way. Peppercini peppers, they're pickled in 50% vinegar. This was actually apple cider vinegar, 50% vinegar, 50% water, and this stays in the refrigerator. And there's chunks of garlic and other seasoning in there. But this is how I really processed all the peppers you saw that were in my garden. If I didn't eat them, they, I dried them or I pickled them. So I hope you enjoyed the series and here is the recap of literally how this garden grew over 2015. Welcome to the Rustic Garden. Today is the 12th of April and after a couple years of waiting I finally got my community plot and I want to show you what the area looks like. Certainly an excitement and beauty here that I think only kids and gardeners yeah, can really appreciate. I had two choices. One 
was in a low area. It had more sun, but it was really, really waterlogged. And this one gets about eight to nine hours of sun. When the trees back there uh, get their leaves, I'm gonna lose a little bit of it. But I'm excited. It's a 20 by 25 foot plot. It'll be plenty of room for me to grow some things that I can't grow over at my place. Um, and just really the experiment. So here is my plot. It was framed up in these four by four raised beds. The soil looks like it's dropped down. I'll have to replace that. It was um, fenced in this with ground this. over. I'm just gonna do a layer of topsoil, peat moss, and build up the soil that way. You don't always have to turn your garden soil over. A lot of people don't do that. They just add to the top, they let the worms do their things. But that's just a different way to prepare the bed. And again, my goal is to have a great garden, have fun, you know, do work, but don't overwork. You don't have to be perfect in the garden. There are a thousand different ways to have plants mature and just have Four a great experience. worth of work, and this is what my plot looks like. I got the containers in. Most of the beds are ready for planting. I'm gonna plant next week. I'm gonna do some trellising next week. I've labeled each bed so I know how I prepared it so I can look over time to see if anything grew better in a certain way. I think everything's gonna be perfectly fine in general. A couple of hours. Peppers are in, kale's lettuce are coming up, got my tomatoes in. A lot's going on. I'm gonna uh, give a walkthrough right at the end too and, and let you know what all the plants are. Put in some cherry tomatoes, a bumblebee variety back there, black cherry, and also got in my hot peppers right in front of the Trellises, potatoes. I'm take my tomatoes, and I am gonna date myself, but with all the bamboo, it's starting to feel a little bit like Gilligan's Island. What I've done today mostly was taking care of my determinate tomatoes. I just shot a video separately on one that you'll probably see. But real quick, determinate tomatoes, you don't really need to prune because they're gonna to grow to a set height, set their flowers, set their fruit. Um, once you get the fruit, the plant dies out. The thing I just wanna show you is when you tie off a tomato, just give it a nice big gap so that you don't choke off the stem against the stake. But again, determinate tomatoes, you don't want to do a lot of pruning. They only get here. Something's going to go in around the squash plant down there that I got seed from uh, the Ukraine. Peppers are doing well. Coming over to my determinate tomatoes. They look like they could use some fertilizer now. Um, they're producing. One thing that you want to do is when your tomatoes start forming the green tomatoes, put a handful of lime right around the plants, maybe you know four or six inches away from the stem, but that lime will bring calcium to your plant and that helps prevent the possibility of your plants getting blossomed in. Until the frost comes, I'll be able to get peas out of there. The peppers are doing pretty well. You can see the Tabasco peppers, I will be making hot sauce out of those. Coming down over to this area, this was my hay bale experiment, uh, experiment where I was growing um, green beans out of the, the hay bales. And you can see I'm already saving the seeds right here. And you just let them dry on the vine. And then you can just save those seeds and replant. These are great if you roast them in an oven, peel the skin off, take the seeds out, and you can actually eat them straight, put them on crackers, use them in dishes. I like to wait till they turn brown and red they do become sweeter this is a baggio pepper you can do the same thing with it again this gets it to a nice chocolate color and this is the best color this is what you want them to get to if you're going to make a I sauce have my out sweet of it. peppers although i was growing a baggio and a cayenne in there and a greek pepperoncini they're hot peppers you don't have to worry about planting hot peppers next to sweet peppers they don't cross that way and create a fruit that's hot they'll cross seeds and next year you might get a hybrid but you don't have to worry about having a hot pepper next to a sweet pepper. Cayennes, these will get dried out, be hot pepper flakes. These are the Greek either pepperoncini or pepperoncini. There's an extra N in there. I'm not sure if it's silent or not but these are going to get jarred. The other sweet peppers will get picked out of here and I'll probably like I said earlier turn them into a sauce. Hope you enjoyed the video. This is my garden as of October 17th. The next video will be the final video and I'll just show you how to really clean up everything and get it ready for next year. Please check out my blog at www.therustedgarden.blogspot.com and also check out my YouTube videos. Thanks.